Hello there, this is Richard from Silent Peak, and today we're having a look at Gigapixel AI. Now we begin by browsing for our image, and I'm going to pick this one here. Now I picked this image because it's not a perfect image to test Gigapixel with. It's an old 6 megapixel photo I took with a kit zoom and a Nikon D40. So it's not high res, and nor is it particularly sharp. Nevertheless, what you're looking at is the same photo increased to 600% its original size. If we click on the original button, we can see what the image looked at before. And now we can see what it looks like uh, after being upscaled. The split screen view is fun. We can sort of pan left to right, view the before and after. And as you can see, Gigapixel AI has done a rather nice job. The side-by-side -side comparison view is a great way to sort of pan around your image, inspect separate elements, make sure that everywhere that needs to look good does look good. And if you find that this particular look isn't for you, we do have five separate AI models. So we have here standard lines, Artan CG, low resolution and very compressed. And which of these different AI models will best will depend on the original photo. So for example, if you are working with a lower resolution image, you click low resolution and that will re-render the image and you can see what you think. Personally, I prefer standard. If you are having a hard time deciding between the different models, we can click on this four-way comparison view and get to see four of those five AI models simultaneously. Well, one word of warning though, is that upon loading this four-way split, Gigapixel AI does have to render four images and it does take a little while to get going. And one last one to go. Now I haven't changed my mind. I still like the standard one and that's what I'm gonna stick with. And at the moment, I've actually got settings on manual. So if you want Gigapixel to do everything for you, we can just set this slider to auto and it'll just take care of everything. But if you're looking for something a little bit more personalized, we can adjust the noise suppression. If we slide it left, it looks worse in my book, so we can slide it right. And that looks better to me. We can remove blur, essentially a sharpening tool. So let's move that over to the left versus moving over to the right. I think that's a bit harsh. I'm going to move it back to the left. And finally, we have these last two features here, uh, reduce color blade. I haven't really noticed what that does yet, um, but it's there and it's free. You don't pay extra for it, so you might as well give it a go. And that's it. We've processed our image. Uh, you don't have to do it 600%. You can go from anywhere from 0 0.5, 2, 4, 6. You can even go beyond 6. However, if you do gigapixel AIs, AI algorithm cease to work and it moves to a more traditional, less effective upscaling process. So 600 really is your upper limit for best results. It works very well with detailed images, whether they're small or large. It will make a small image big and a large image massive. However, it will struggle with very poor image quality, images full of noise, badly focused, etc., and particularly bad with images that have been subjected to heavy noise reduction. There just simply isn't enough detail left for Gigapixel AI to evaluate and uh, expand upon. If you're not sure Gigapixel AI is for you or the photos you need to process, Try it. It's a free trial. It's an unlimited free trial. The downside is all your images will be watermarked, um, but you get to test it out and find out if it's going to work for you and your photos. Anyway, I hope that was useful. All our information is in the description below, and I wish you a very good day. Bye-bye.